We've circled three times. There's nothing here to indicate an ambush. No, the cave is small. You wouldn't be able to fit more than two men abreast in there. And although it does go back a ways, the cramped conditions would prevent any significant attack. Oh, we scouted this area when deciding where to place our camp. We thought about storing supplies in the cave and setting up the main camp beside the mill, but the conditions were too damp inside and the old mill too rickety. We didn't want to ruin our supplies or bring a dilapidated building down upon our heads. Are you satisfied with our reconnaissance? Good. It's just, when you shift back into a human, for a moment you're a bit illuminated with that sapphire glow. It's breathtaking. <clears throat> Let's go. Braylon? Braylon, it's me, Rowan. I'm here as you asked. There's a fire going back there. Braylon? Princess. What the hell? Lady Celeste Grimald. I certainly didn't expect to see you here. Princess Rowan. I heard you took a spear to the leg. And yet you're back to the battlefield so soon. Married to your northern ally. Princess, I told you not to bring anyone. You said not to bring guards, and I did not. I brought only my spouse, who you have already met. Why are you accompanied by the enemy commander? You invited the princess here? Braylon, what is this? Will everyone please just listen? Please, put the swords away. Give me one good reason why I should. Because you both want the same thing. And what would those things be? An end to the war, and for the people to be safe, and the magic to be fixed. Their father is trying to overthrow my mother and kill our subjects, all because he's angry about us offering protection to weaker shifter clans. Is a difference of opinion no longer allowed in Zedaron? Stop! <sighs> Lady Celeste, I heard you. When I was out in the woods collecting firewood, I heard you talking to your aide. You told them that your father was in the wrong, and had to be stopped at any cost. You... Heard that? Was anyone else with you? I was alone, I promise. No one else heard it. And I didn't tell anyone either. You want to stop your own father? I... <sighs> yes, of course I do. He's forcing people to be turned against their will and is trying to overthrow a ruling family that has treated us well for generations. His violent nature is doing far more harm than good. And I can no longer live with this on my conscience. And do you have backing from your own people? Yes, from my covert investigations. I have learned that nearly half the Griffins and their allies don't actually agree with my father's leadership. Then why not publicly denounce what he's doing? Break off and swear fealty to my mother the Queen. Show him that his cause is hopeless. <laughs> Would you openly go against your mother if you were in my shoes? I... No. I can't say that I would. At least not easily. At least you understand that one's reach is limited in such a situation. Besides that, at my father's side, I can soften the blow, just a little. Keep him in check as best I can. That's why I set up this meeting. Set up is one way to put it. When you wrote to me to say that you had information about the human revolutionaries, I expected information. Not a forced meeting with the heir to the throne of Zedaron, who, I might add, is my sworn enemy. Only because you publicly support your father. But you're working towards the same end. And how does me being here result in me making good on the oath I swore to you? Both of you showed me kindness when I was taken prisoner. Lady Celeste, you asked your father not to turn me and the other children, but made sure we were cared for when he did anyways. You also put me on a lighter duty, which is why I was riding in the wagon that day when the convoy was attacked. Princess Rowan didn't treat me like a prisoner of war. She made sure healers tended to my injuries, gave me food, let me stay in a warm tent, and didn't interrogate me by force. And she let me go. I wasn't lying about that. And both of you, separately, 
have said that you want to restore peace and fix whatever imbalance that you've heard about. You want to make sure that those who have magic and those who don't can peacefully coexist, right? Right. right. I've seen a lot of leaders make a lot of empty promises, and my people always suffer for it. But you two, you two actually act like you want to make a difference. You're making decisions based on the greater good. I think if I told you what I know, and if you work together, you could... I don't know... end the war? I... <laughs> you deceived two opposing military leaders, one royal and one noble, tricking them into meeting in a cave at night during a war. You... Are a very brave person, Braylon. <laughs> On that, we can agree. If you believe in what Braylon says, then so do I. <sighs> All right, let's talk. <sighs> Please, sit down. So, will you share with us what you know, Braylon? Yes. <sighs> The Griffins already know about an imbalance in magic. That's why their self-proclaimed king is taken over. He wanted the dragons off the throne for a long time because of their alliance with the smaller Shitra clans. So he's pinning the blame on their line and is using that lie to convince people to join his side. But he's not able to convince the humans. Because we, I mean, they, they know that it's not just the dragons at fault. That's why he's turning us by force, and he's making the problem worse. People have known for a long time that magic holds a cost. But over the last hundred years, only the ungifted have paid it. That cost being life itself? Yes. About eight years ago, we started noticing things happening. Illness, crops dying, and then people just weren't having babies as often. Everyone thought it was just bad luck. Maybe something in the soil. But then, when I was seven, this man came to the village. He looked crazy. Acted crazy. But we took pity on him. The people of my village fed him, brought him blankets, made up a cozy place for him to sleep. And before he left the table in the great hall, he suddenly became very serious. In return for our kindness, he said he'd share a prophecy with us. He told us that a debt was owed, and until it was paid, there would be pain and devastation. For every shift that was made, a regular human would fall ill. For every spell cast by a mage, an ear of corn would wither. And for every person born into magic, a normal baby would not be born at all. It wasn't until we heard stories of similar visitors to other villages, all bearing the same messages, that we began to worry. Soon, we realized that the suffering we had been seeing, it was all due to magic. And our parents and older siblings began a movement, first in whispers, then growing to a roar. The revolution, it wasn't started out of hate, just out of fear. And now look where we are. I don't understand. Magic has coexisted with us for thousands of years, and there's never been such a high cost to pay. We found others like that man. We called them seers. They all told us the lifeblood of magic was on balance, that the kingdoms had been healthy and at peace for so long, and too many people had taken too much. And now, a debt of life is owed to magic itself. A sacrifice must be made to restore balance. And your people thought that killing shifters and mages was the solution. At first, they only targeted a few powerful ones. They wanted to see if it made a difference, but then the shifters began to retaliate. 
Bears from the Jagged Pack clan attacked my village after their alpha was killed. My parents both died in that attack. I'm so sorry. That's the point at which my father got involved. He saw an opportunity, proclaimed himself king of the Griffins, and began to raise an army while spreading lies that the dragons alone were at fault for the imbalance in magic. It suited his decades-long campaign to bring down the dragon line. Yes, but he doesn't know or care about why it's happening. As he raised his army, he began to turn human prisoners, which made everything even worse. Both of you began recruiting mages for your war efforts, and my people began to drop like flies. And now we're all at war with each other, using up magical reserves and bringing things further into chaos. How do we fix this? There's supposed to be a keeper of magic in every generation. Someone who exists to safeguard the balance. Supposed to be? Has this one gone missing? Is that perhaps why things have fallen to ruin? No. Nothing like that. Um, uh, they sort of represent the magic. They don't actually balance it on their own. So when sacrifices are made, they have to be made to the Keeper. And the Keeper communes with magic itself to determine if it's acceptable. When we learned about the Keeper, we thought that maybe our sacrifices weren't enough because we hadn't gone to them first. So we started searching for them. We had only just learned that they were on the northern continent before the rest of my group was taken prisoner by the Griffins. So we need to speak to the Keeper about what can be done. <sighs> if what you say is true, then I can't imagine the scale of sacrifice that must be made to bring all of this to an end. Agreed. But that is a problem for my family to solve. We're the protectors of the realm. This falls to us. What do you plan to do? And how can I help? We must find the Keeper. And we'll need the support of a few academics well-versed in the history of magic. I will take this knowledge to the Queen and oversee this effort myself. But leaving the front unguarded... You simply cannot. You'd put all your people in danger, were my army to stay its current course. Yes. And your airborne legions would only take a few days to notice that I haven't been around. By that time, I'll barely have started my research efforts in the capital. Since time is what we need, then let's talk about the most eminently pressing issue. Your father is proving dangerous. He started a war, and the advancement of his schemes has been fatal to many. From what you've said, not everyone supports his vendetta against the Dragon Line, or our alliances with weaker clans. What would you need in order to stop him, as you wish to do? A coup, ideally. As well as time to plan one and resources to fall back on. I also want immunity for those who support me. They should not be punished for being forced to follow my father, or for having been misled by his lies. I can arrange for the resources, that's no problem. And I swear to you, on my father's grave, I will convince my mother to be merciful to the soldiers. But I need something concrete before I can act. I cannot take this to the Queen for approval unless there's a plan in place. Fair enough. Give me two days. How shall I contact you? Let me help. I can read messages back and forth. I- Absolutely not. No chance. But I want to help. And you will. I shall need your assistance in the Royal Library. We have copies of almost every tome and publication that has ever existed, and thousands of transcribed stories besides. We will need to look through them to see what can be found about this keeper of magic. Your sharp eyes and quick mind will be well suited to the task, I know it. In the meantime, my father will be questioning my absence tonight. Oh, I can help with that too. He needs to be distracted, right? So, tell him that you did get something from this meeting. Tell him that you learned of a revolutionary camp along the Yarvis River, where over 300 human soldiers and their families are hiding out and making preparations. I cannot just lie outright to one of the most unhinged madmen that ever walked this continent. It's not a lie. Well, not entirely. It's an old stronghold. They were ordered evacuated the same week that I was captured, 
So, revolutionaries were there a few weeks ago, but I know they're far away from there by now. If your father goes there, it'll buy us a few weeks of time while he's busy, and no one will be harmed. And he'll see that your information was good, just maybe not as recent as he might have wanted. And I can guard his forward camp for him while he's away, using the time to quietly gather support so that we can stop his senseless campaign. This could work. It could. We at least owe it to our people to try. Agreed. (laughs) If you told me this morning that I'd be holding this clandestine meeting, I wouldn't have believed you. Nor I, to be sure. But thanks to one brave citizen, our entire kingdom may be saved. When I have a plan in place and I'm ready for your aid, I shall contact you by Raven, using the code name Lilac. With your help, we'll bring him to justice. When my father is safely in the custody of the crown, I shall swear fealty to your mother, the queen, and we may turn our attention fully to restoring our people. Very well. Lady Celeste, I look forward to our alliance and to the peace it will hopefully bring. Likewise, Princess Rowan, I bid you good night. (laughs) You amaze me. At your service, Princess. Come back to camp with us. We'll see to it that you get a comfortable bed. Tomorrow, we're bound for the capital. Really? Yes. The Queen will want a full report from you. So you'd best get some rest. Go on ahead of us. We'll follow. Well, you weren't wrong. I wasn't entirely right either. It wasn't a trap, but it was not what it seemed. I'm suddenly so tired. Thank you. I need to ask you something. When I go to the northern continent to find the Keeper, will you come with me? Of course I need someone I can rely on to look after my armies, but I have commanders for that. Who better to accompany me to the northern continent than someone who was born there? What I want, more than anything, is for you to be by my side. I don't want to go it alone. And I find myself thinking that if something should happen to you while I was away, I would never forgive myself. So, please indulge the selfish whims of a princess and come with me. (laughs) Thank you. What, back there? That was nothing. Just a bit of diplomatic strategy. Well, if you love watching me at work playing politics, you'll very much enjoy the rest of your life with me. (laughs) Come on.